Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael Brewer. This is the Welcome to Postgres session at Postgres Open 2015. This is designed to kind of get everybody used to the idea of a Postgres conference. The thought was that it, it might be a bit much to ask you to ask uh, people that are new to Postgres to just jump into the deep end of, of partitioning your database or you know how 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 to do a common table expression or something like that. And so this is intended as an introduction to Postgres, the community, um, a few little tips and, to get you kind of pushed along the right way, but this is, just, this is just kind of an orientation session. So not only do we not expect you to, to know about Postgres in this talk, um, knowledge of Postgres might be actually detrimental. No, it, it, it'll, it'll be fine. But this is, this is our, our gentle welcome. And as such, welcome everybody. We are thrilled in the Postgres community that you, have, that you have not only decided to look at our database, but decide to come to a conference that will train you on all aspects of Postgres. Um, the new users are the lifeblood of any project, and we are very happy that you all are here. So, and I said this was an orientation to Postgres, and, and we meant it. One of the first things that, that people ask us in the new pro, in the, when they come over to Postgres is how do you pronounce? You, you guys have this really funny name. How do you say it? The official name of the project is PostgresQL, P, as, as spelled and as capitalized on this slide, PostgresQL. PostgreSQL, just straight through it without, without pauses or, or awkward things. The name Postgres is, is an accepted alias, which means that it is the short form, it is the familiar, it is the name that we all like using uh, because it's a lot easier to say than PostgreSQL. It is not PostgresQL, you'll see this variant when people start typing on, on listservs and message boards and IRC, you'll see uh, Postgres spelled in various different ways. And I want to save you the, the, um, the etiquette discourtesy of, of ma making a faux pas when, when, on your first post. So it's not PostgresQL. Um, you'll see this one a lot, PostgreSQL. Um, or Postgres, um, or just Postgre, uh, when people drop, when people get casual and drop SQL entirely. Um, you'll often, you'll also see this one. Um, um, people start spelling the SQL really carefully. Postgre SQL, and you don't have to say all of those. You can just say Postgres. Postgres. Give it a try. Post. Thank you. It's also, um, sometimes people will, will refer to Postgres as the name of the program that they use to interface with it. So it's not the, com so we don't really often refer to it as the command line tool, PSQL, or PGSQL, or PGAdmin, or PHP PGAdmin. These are, these are programs that we use to, to interact with, with the Postgres database. These are not the actual name of the database itself. We also want to go through a, a brief history, very quick history of the Postgres project for you guys. It was developed in the 80s as a spin-off of Ingress, the Interactive Graphics Retrieval System project at Berkeley. And you can see from the bolded letters, I-N-G-R-E-S um, became Ingress. It was a spin-off of Ingress, so it became post-Ingress or Postgres. As, as if nothing else, the, the long history of the project has shown a continuing, a continuing motion to shorten the name in any way possible. Uh, for a time, it was called Postgres 95, um, but it has been PostgresQL since 96. Yes, that means we're coming up on a big anniversary, the 20 year anniversary of the Postgres project is next year. Um, Postgres at that time was technically version 6.0. So that should remind me that 
a lot of people, when they come to the Postgres project, say, what's the deal with the version numbers? Because we get kind of these weird looking version numbers. If you go to postgres.org, you'll see five latest releases, all the nine series. 9.4.4, 9 9.3.9, 9.213, 9.118, 9.022. And, and you quite sensibly go, what does this mean? What, what do all these numbers refer to? So these days, the first two pairs of digits, 9.4, 9.3, 9.2, 9.1, or 9.0, these are what we refer to as major releases of Postgres. Generally speaking, a major release introduces a, a ton of new functionality to Postgres. They come roughly once a year, eh, 15 months, 16 months. Um, usually if the, usually the, the bigger the, the, feat, the new feature that's being rolled in is, or the more, the more kind of earth shattering the, the, the functionality, it takes a little longer for us to test it. But, but for the past five or six years, they've, they've been sticking fairly closely to a annual or stretching out an annual to about a year and a half release cycle. The big numbers used to be milestone releases. So, you know, seven, Postgres seven, we got foreign keys and we updated the SQL join syntax. Uh, Postgres eight series was big because we finally got a native Windows version. People were asking for years, you know, when are we gonna get a native Windows version? When eight came around, we did, and we saw an explosion in Postgres adoption. Postgres nine series introduced binary replication. Replication in Postgres, used to be a little more challenging than it now is. Also, the, the, major, the major releases used to require a database dump and restore. We, we no longer need to do that in our major releases. So again, 9.4, when, when you talk to other people about Postgres, they'll often ask what version of Postgres you're using. This is what they mean. They, they will be, are you using the 9.4 series? Are you using the 9.3 series? Um, are, you, are you still running 8.4 on your server at home? Yeah, things, things like that. Um, so you might ask, what are these things at the end? The, the dot .4, dot .9, these are for bug fixes or security updates. Those come out very much more often than the major releases. They could come out at any particular time. Um, and you are encouraged to update to those point releases whenever, whenever they come out. Um, it's not a, generally, again, they are not changes in functionality. They're not giving you any new tools, any new features. They're just, you know, we found this obscure race condition causes something to happen. We need everybody to, to update. Sometimes people ask, who owns Postgres? No one. Postgres is, a, is completely open source. It's the, the code base is contributed to by developers and companies all across the world. Um, global development cycle. Um, there is a core team of developers. Several of the core team are at this conference. You can see on, if you go to our website at postgres.org um, slash community slash contributors, there's a whole list of who the core team is, who the major contributors are. Um, it, it's, it, it tells you who the players are in a very comprehensive way. One of the wonderful things about the Postgres project also that you will find is that core team members are approachable. Um, they are friendly. They are more than willing to talk to you about your problems. Um, to, to answer your questions, to share a beer with you at the reception this evening at 6 o'clock, um, or is it 6.30? 6? 6, 6 o'clock. Get, get there early and, and talk to people. When I first started in this project was at, was at OzCon in 2002, and I went to the Postgres Boff and sat on an inflatable couch between Bruce Momjen and Tom Lane. And... Um, they were kind, courteous, professional, funny, and 
it was a model of interaction for any open source community. I highly recommend that you guys get to get to know who, you know, find a core team member, say hi. So find a major contributor sitting over there checking his, uh, checking his tweets and say hi to, to Rob Treat over, over, over in the wall who needs, <laughs> who needs no introduction to Postgres. But, but um, say hi to him. Offer him a caffeine-free Dr. Pepper or a root beer. You'll, you'll find that, that several core team members and major contributors uh, are, are somewhat of root beer aficionados. So if you like root beer and want to talk about it, that's a great way to start a conversation. Postgres runs a PostgreSQL license, which is similar to a BASD or an MIT license. It's an open source license. Where can you get help for Postgres when you, when you need it? Tons and tons of places. The first place you should go is our website, postgres.org. We have a, a full and comprehensive docs page that's very, very easy to read, very easy to look up stuff on there. The search bars are good. Um, you can look up our docs, including for different, ver there are different docs for different versions, again, major versions of Postgres that are maintained on the website. We also have a wiki, as everybody does these days, at wiki.postgresql.org. Um, Pay special attention to the FAQ section of our wiki, wiki page. Also, once you start working with Postgres for a while, you'll, you'll probably want to advocate it for other people. There are a ton of advocacy resources on the wiki Postgres page that I highly recommend. There are also mailing lists at postgres.org uh, slash list. The lists that will be most appropriate for you, you all at this time would be PS, PGSQL Novice, uh, general. There's the SQL list, which is uh, what, for people that actually have very specific SQL questions. The advocacy list, which is where we go when we're trying to figure out how to share the joy of Postgres with all of you. And of course, a jobs list, which is very good. There are other lists that, that are very developer specific. You should probably not try to, to go into those groups until you are an actual Postgres developer. If you go on a mailing list, remember that you're not just you know, browsing the internet, that you are entering a community of people. So as, as you would when you are entering someone's home, please read as much in the po as possible in the documentation before asking any questions. And please try to make sure that you include as much information as possible in your post to the listserv, saying this doesn't work. While, while you know, an accurate statement of a problem, we um, folks would need a little more information to be able to help you. And again, the lists are, are a wonderful place. Uh, Tom Lane, whom I mentioned before, core team member, has a superhuman ability to answer listserv questions at seemingly any time of day or night um, and in an incredibly helpful and incredibly precise way. Um, the, the mailing lists are a, an excellent resource for you. We also have an IRC channel at um, the PostgreSQL node on Freenode. There are also, for non-English speakers, there are very many many language-specific ones that you can get onto. There's even a help bot on these things where common questions can be answered by a help bot. And you'll often see people, the, the, the most common use case is a bunch of Postgres people are hanging out on IRC. Someone come in, comes in, asks their question. The people that are already there fire off a question to the help bot. The help bot instantly responds to that question. And then everyone says, hey, they're done, and, and continues the conversation they were already having. Again, on the IRC things, you're entering a community. So again, read as much as possible. Include as much information as possible. And this new one that, I, that we added here, please listen for a little bit on IRC when you jump in before you pop in with your question. Um, you will, sometimes they will, be, they will be discussing something else that, that is kind of an important thread for, for, the, for the people on the channel to finish before they can, they can come in. Also, by listening on IRC before you talk, you get kind of a sense of what the rhythms are, how, how folks 
can be. I know that Postgres has a reputation. Some of our members are less diplomatic than others um, when talking to new members. We are, we, we are working on that. Um, and so by, by going online and just kind of seeing what the general flow is, you will get an idea very quickly of what to and what to not, what not to say on IRC. This being the 21st century, Postgres is also on social media. Um, there's a planet, planetpostgresql.org, which, which aggregates a bunch of blog posts on Postgres. It even has a Twitter feed at Planet Postgres. Other social media, yeah. We don't have a lot of social media presence. Oh, but there is a Google Plus account for people that still are using Google Plus. Um, I'm pretty sure we don't have a Facebook page. <laughs> and I'm not even sure who would maintain it if we did. Um, that's pretty much what you've got uh, in terms of social media. In terms of conferences, obviously, we're very happy that you've chosen to come to Postgres Open. There's also PGConf US, which is held in New York City. Um, generally, it's in, I want to say, March? March? Yeah, March or April. OK. Yeah, and um, we're, we're still working with, the, with getting the venue set. So an announcement on, if you go to, if you go to the PGConf US webpage now, it will show you the 2015 uh, presentations and all that material. It will be updated fairly soon when, when um, it's ready to go. Um, but this is one of our major conference, Postgres conferences in the United States. You also have PGCon in Ottawa, Canada, which has been, it's usual, it used to be in May, it's been shifted to June this year. Um, while, this, while PGCon tends to be more developer specific, it is open to anyone. And, and is, again, a great way to meet people in the Postgres community and to learn a ton of stuff from people that are actually in there working the code. There are also international conferences like PGEU. I know that there's even a conference coming up in Cuba in a month or two, um, for those of you who, who really want to travel. Um, there are also regional PG days. We have an increasing presence at non-Postgres specific conferences such as OSCON or SCALE, Linux Fest Northwest, Texas Linux Fest, um, Ohio Linux Fest, um, Southeast Linux Fest. A lot, of these, a lot of these conferences now include a lot more Postgres con content than they used to. Um, especially SCALE um, had, what, two, what was it, two tracks, two days of Yeah, uh, for those of you who don't know, Scale is the South Southern California, yeah, Southern California Linux S Expo. It'll be in late January this year. You can also get help from local Postgres user groups or PUGs. There are a lot of them listed on our website. Some of them are inactive, but we've actually got started doing a better job of keeping up on the website with, with the list of who they are. And a lot of them have, have pleasantly charming names. Um, most of them have mailing lists and or meetup groups. We're seeing a, a significant uptick in the use of meetup for Postgres. Um, so make sure if you haven't been before, you'll often see kind of the grizzled vets kind of talking about those kids and their rock and or roll music and meetup groups. Um, it's taking the old guard a little bit of time to shift over to Meetup, but we are embracing it and moving. Um, some Postgres user groups start, have started using Google, Handout, Google Hangouts and or live broadcasting their pug meetings so that you can watch, say, the San Francisco pug meeting. You can watch a presentation from Portland if you need to. Some of them even host PG days, uh, single day user, user conferences. You can go again to our website and see the list at postgres.com, I'm uh, sorry, postgres.org slash community slash user dash groups. And it lists all of them, including, um, you can see the, the interesting names that, that some of them, including Milwaukee, um, have chosen for their, 
uh, Postgres. I also am, am uh, contractually obligated to, to put in a plug at this point for the United States PostgreSQL Association, PGUS or Postgres, PostgreSQL.US. Um, we've been giving financial support to PUGS, um, setting up a process for giving diversity grants to help, to help um, expand uh, representation at conferences. Um, we've been talking about offering Google Hangouts ourselves. Um, we're major sponsors of PGConf US. Um, the reason that I'm plugging it to is because I've been on this bo uh, the board of PostgreSQL Association since 2008. And actually the president is sitting right over there waving, waving his hand. So that's kind, of, that's kind of an introduction to the history where to look, who to talk to about Postgres. The rest of this talk, I'm gonna kind of go through and give you some, some starting tips for when you use Postgres that I hope will be helpful to you. This is just necessarily an, a quick overview. Um, we're not gonna get really in depth to this. And um, this, this is stuff that I wish I'd had when I started. Um, and your mileage may vary on these. Some of these you might, you might already be familiar with, some of which you'll, you're gonna, hopefully you'll be like, oh wow, that's really cool. So Postgres is all about data. It's all about the security and safety of data over any other considerations. And so, it's helpful when you're working with Postgres that you have at least some understanding of what a transactions, what transactions are like. Um, familiarize yourself with what race conditions mean. Postgres has MVCC locking. Um, you, you should probably learn about Postgres locks and isolation levels. Um, just do a little bit of Googling and, and find out what things are there. And this should in, in this 2015 in which we live, it should go without saying, but often doesn't, especially in this era of kind of these no SQL databases. But, but Postgres is an asset compliant database and, and at least in its default configuration. So it helps if you, if you are not familiar with what I'm talking about with ACID, that you look up what ACID means. Um, Postgres handles nulls really well and in a really precise fashion, but not everyone when they come to Postgres from other databases that may or may, may have kind of a more casual method of, of handling them. Um, so it, it, it will help you when you're working with Postgres to familiarize, familiarize yourself with what nulls are, know what they mean, how they affect logic in conditional statements, how they affect concatenation when you're concatenating values with nulls, how they affect joins. Um, in, in Postgres SQL syntax, you'll often find that, that you'll, you'll find yourself using this kind of formulation a, a lot, where some value equals to or null, will, and that will be kind of the, the, the magic, the secret sauce that will, that will make your queries work a lot better. Uh, joins. Again, it probably goes without saying, but just in case it doesn't, seek, make sure you understand the difference between left joins, right joins, outer joins, and full joins. Also, it helps if you, understand, if you can recognize a Cartesian cross product when you see it, when you're debugging something. Um, how many of you do not know what I mean when I, when I talk about a Cartesian cross product? Awesome, this is a, this is a, a very advanced group of people from last year. Good, good. Postgres is all about referential integrity. Be very diligent when you're setting up your database about re referential integrity, including the, the magic phrase on update cascade for foreign keys when you're, when you're setting these up so that the, the database can, you know, in theoretically, you won't be updating your primary keys because, who, because we've We've all been through that class where, where they told us that our, that our primary keys should have no meaning other than just the intrinsic part. But sometimes you do have to update a key. 
And when you do, as if you if you set it up with an update cascade, Postgres will handle it for you quickly and easily. Indices. Postgres has a staggering number of different indices, including multi-column indices, partial indices, and functional indices. These are all really neat things uh, that you that um, if you if you haven't worked with these yet, again. It's, it is very helpful to, to orient yourself with what these do. Um, also, you can name indices. So choose, your, you know, so choose your names wisely. The great thing about naming indices is that if, if something fails, if you have named it yourself and not, and not um, chosen a default terse Postgres name, it'll be easier when you're debugging to figure out what, what is going on. Also, you will probably want to add indices to foreign keys in a lot of situations. Postgres does not do that automatically. So um, because the main purpose of for foreign keys is to join tables, adding indices to these join tables will, will in a lot of cases, speed up your, your application if you, if you haven't done that yet. Constraints. Again, Postgres is about data. We, we, we like constraining our data. We like creating Postgres. When you start working with Postgres, you start getting this kind of schema glow where you, you, really, you really like data modeling and setting up a schema to where it, it's only the data that you'll want and nothing else. Um, uniqueness constraints in Postgres are fantastically useful, especially for multi-column multi constraints. Um, and again, you can name these too. You can name your constraints so that when they fail and something happens, you can get a more, a more verbose error message and, and know, oh, okay, the reason this is failing is because I have a uniqueness constraint on this, on this particular column or set of columns over here, and that's what's failing. That's the part of the app that, that's the part of the app that isn't working. Um, if you're coming to Postgres from another database that, um, that does auto numbering um, of primary keys or auto generation of primary keys, you'll want to familiarize yourself with the serial type, as in a serial primary key. This gives your tables auto increment or auto numbering function. Um, if you do this, Postgres uses kind of a... Um, use the model that we kind of think of as a, as a post-it notepad or, or a scratch pad. You use a, you use a key, you generate an index, and it's gone. You use the next one, and it's gone. This is because we like Postgres never to accidentally use the same key twice, or if you have different transactions looking at, at something, it, you'll, never, you'll never accidentally have a visibility problem with it. This, however, does lead, to, lead you to some occasions where you will get non-contiguous pri um, primary keys. When, you're look, when you do a database dump, if, a transaction, if an insert transaction failed for whatever reason, you can't use that primary key anymore unless you go back in and, and set it somehow. Um, sometimes um, I've seen clients that get really upset at this and ask us to recode an application so that all the keys get used. Um, you can you can do that, um, but most likely, if you're if you're using default things, you will not have contiguous. Um, you will wind up not having continuous primary keys. Uh, PSQL is kind of our command line tool for dealing with Postgres, and a, a lot of us use that and and are very and have and are very fond of PSQL. If you're using PSQL, you'll probably want to, to use this set of commands very, very well. And I'm going to take a just a little bit of time to tell you what each of these does. The backslash L command will list all the databases that, that you have available to you at any particular time. Backslash DT, when you're in a, when you're in a database, Will, will describe the tables that are available to you. The back, in fact, backslash D gives you a lot of things. You can, you can describe backslash DS for sequences, backslash DI for indices. Um, but usually when you're in there, you want to see what the tables are. 
And so you do a backslash DT to show, you know, what are all my tables? If you want to describe it an individual table, backslash D space, you know, foo bar, and it will, sh and it will describe that particular table for you. Backslash Z is, is helpful. Um, it shows you just everything that's available to you in a particular database. So if, if you're in database foo, and you do a backslash Z, it just, it just turns out, here are all your tables, here are all your, your indices and all your sequences. That's most useful if you're, if you're dealing with permissions. Um, sometimes um, sometimes you'll, um, you'll occasionally run into an error where the, um, the permissions on a table will be granted to the web user but not permissions to create the sequence that generates these, these uh, primary key indice numbers. And so if your web app doesn't have permission to start pulling these, then, the, then when you try to create something, you'll, you'll go, why is this failing? And so if you, do a, if you go into PSQL and do a backslash D, sometimes you'll see a, permission, a set of permissions um, that won't be granted to the index or to the sequence, and that's where the problem will lie. Uh, backslash X is a fun one. It turns off expanded mode. It toggles expanded mode in display. So if you're going through a record set, sometimes, it, especially in you know, 40, 80 column displays, it might not be helpful to say select all from this table and you get you know, row after row after row. Sometimes you want to navigate it kind of record set and record set and record set. And backslash X will do that for you. Uh, backslash C is what we use to connect to different databases, so when you're jumping from database to database. And of course, backslash question mark to give you help when you can't remember backs what all these backslash things mean. Or when you've, when you've gone through everything on this slide and you're like, well, what other backslash things are available in NPSQL will say, glad you asked. Here are about three pages of, of different backslash things for you. Also, um, if you are on a command line and you want to process SQL files, you'll often do do this formulation where you do PSQL dash F, the file you want to come in, dash small o, an output file, and then the name of the database itself. This is all again on the, the docs on, on postgres.org, but I just thought that these might be fairly useful for, for you when you're just kind of getting into it. More, You'll start getting into more advanced areas of, of Postgres, including generate series, um, where this, this will enable you to generate like an equivalent of a for each loop um, or a for loop. Um, it's also useful when you want to generate a bunch of test data. Uh, range types, these are, are sort of new to Postgres. Um, there are a ton of different types that are new to Postgres. Um, a particular favorite of mine, you'll, you'll, write, you'll generate SQL that writes other SQL, which you'll, you'll use sometimes when you have to migrate data to different, to different um, databases. Common table expressions, um, foreign data wrappers. Um, there are, there are, uh, there's at least one and actually maybe two talks about, about using other data stores. This is a very exciting method thing that Postgres, including um, not the 9.5 that is about to come out. Um, um, in, there's a talk about the various features of 9.5 and the ability of Postgres to, to talk to foreign data stores as if they are just a table or just another, another database is, is very exciting. PostGIS is a huge area for us. Uh, JSON and JSONB uh, data types. Um, Again, these are these are all, Postgres has has a, a staggering amount of, of different data types that they use and different programming languages that are used, and um, you'll you'll get to you'll get acquainted with all of them um, over the course of of this week, this week this conference and over the course of your Postgres experience. Different things to Google. 
tuning PostgreSQL configuration files. This is at, this probably after how do you pronounce Postgres is, is one of the is probably the next thing that's most asked for Postgres users is how do you tune the Postgres config files to work faster or better for your particular configuration. Um, there's a thing about how to show database table size, which is also on our wiki. Um, this is useful to, to say, you know, how mu you know how much of our disk, it, how how much of our of our disks space is is Postgres using? Um, how much index bloat are we getting in Postgres? Um, also, you'll want to look up the PGXM. This is this is our way of of extending Postgres. Um, and just for fun, at some point when you have when you have a spare moment, Google the phrase Postgres and PL lol code. This was a project about gosh eight years ago now. Um, if you don't know what PL stand for, PLs are programming languages inside Postgres. Postgres supports a whole bunch of different types of them, um, not just kind of the standard base Postgres, but you could also have maybe a Perl syntax or PHP, Java, JavaScript. Um, and someone, it, it's, it's relatively easy to write, it, well, not easy, but it's relatively straightforward to write a programming language. And so someone wrote lol code p, p, uh, for programming language. So um, your, your select qu queries became can has you know, this or something like that. It's, it's a very entertaining and functional uh, Postgres project, and it's, and it's a good way to, f to freak out your, your, um, your dev team if you install it without actually telling them. Are there any questions at this point that I can answer? Yes. Um, so you mentioned the Wikipedia data Yes. Um, well, I'm, I'm trying to, f I'm, I'm, the, the question, uh, the question for the video was, is there a way in the PSQL dump when, when you're, when you're dumping PSQL, is there a way to turn off the serial data type? Um, there are a lot of configuration, um, PG dump is, is how we, is how we do kind of bulk, bulk dumps. And there are a lot of configuration parameters to it. Um, if, if you look on the PostgreSQL docs for PG dump, uh, I think it's PG underscore dump is the, is the syntax for that. Um, there are a lot of, of configuration parameters. That being said, I'm not sure, I'm not sure why you would want to turn it off. Um, Yeah, yeah. What it does is it creates a sequence for you and it puts the default value of the column in the column and the next value of the sequence. And so when you're bulk loading, you're loading data into that column, so you're not using the default, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so basically, you bulk mm -hmm. load and it just works. And the only thing you might have to do, which again, PG dump does for you automatically, but you might have to reset the value of the sequence to to be the next value that you want it to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you can set, you can set the sequence so that yeah. the next value. PG dump, PG dump, I mean, depending on, depending on how you configure, but PG dump is, is putting out text usually. Um, and, and it's, and depending on, again, dep a lot, when, when you ask uh, how to do something in Postgres, the, a lot of times the first answer you're going to get is it depends. Um, so there are a lot of configuration parameters, but, um, Generally, when you're how when I'm using when I'm using PG dump, um, there's a there's a way for for you can have PG dump just using straight insert insert statements to your data, and there's also a slightly faster way where it just says copy, and the copy command kind of kind of 
takes the safeties off. Because usually if you're using insert statements, then you go into all your referential integrity and, and you know, it's checking to make sure your foreign keys and, and, your, and your data constraints are all observed when it's, when it's doing something. When pgdump is using a copy command, it, it assumes that it's coming from pgdump already, and so everything, it, it says, okay, we can take off the brakes and just shovel everything into this database, and it'll all be okay. And so you don't have to, you don't have to worry about it, it um, burn, you know, burning parts of the scratch, the sequence scratch pad. Um, it's not, you know, it'll, 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 it'll do it properly for you where it just it tosses everything into the table very fast and then it's and and one of the config parameters that you can look for in there is here's the sequence here's the number the actual number that that, that sequence needs to start at and it'll load it it'll set it internally as to what that number is and then it just goes from there other questions Thanks, everybody. Um, enjoy your conference. If you have any questions, you know, please talk to anybody, and and they'll be happy to talk to you about Postgres. We're really glad that you're here, and um, and I think you're going to find that Postgres works for you very well. Um, thanks, everybody.